We had such a great conversation during the commercial break. We said, Dennis, don't leave, don't leave. I'm still here. And he said, you are prying me out of this chair over my dead body. Yeah, I'm now, uh, I'm the, what am I, the fourth host? You're the fourth host. Yeah. You're the fourth host. should be there. One of the things we said that was really interesting is that Kame you live for the news every morning. Yep. First thing you do. Yep. Online, what's going on. Yep. And comedians do as well. All comedians do because that's the blood for them to be what they are. Yeah, I mean... I'm a sports nut too, so of course I want to get those scores and the things I didn't get the night before, but <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't even know how to, I, you can't operate, I mean as a comedian, I just can't operate unless I think I have a sense of what the news was that day. Um, and you know, like we were talking about Jon Stewart before, you know, uh, sometimes if I've missed a really busy day and missed a lot of the news, like you can actually pick up what the day's yeah, news was that? from John, but I have to get that information at some point. And sometimes it's, it's always amazing to me when I turn to somebody and I go, you know, you, did you hear about blah, blah, blah? And they go, no, when did that happen? I was like, what do you mean when did it happen? It I know, I do that too, morning. John. You're not paying attention. You know? What's your take on politics yeah. on the political season? This, uh, this I'd love I, to hear what you I think. I don't know what to think right now. You know, Really? I, yeah. Meaning? Meaning I don't know which way it's going to go. Mm -hmm. um, I keep waiting. You know, I, uh, it's like uh, baseball to me. This is like the baseball season. It doesn't mean anything until we get to September and October. Oh, sure. That's when we're really going to get into the playoffs. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that's going on now I don't really care about, but... Um, I, um, to me, the most interesting part about the politics is really the primaries when you get to see everybody who's going to make a fool of themselves and step on landmines, and I love that. So we know there's landmines coming between these two guys. Mm -hmm. So that's really when baseball heats up in September and October is when it's, uh, yeah. you know, Romney and Obama. But, but you, you know. pay attention to what's happening with the Red Sox. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I but, but, I mean, you, you said to me earlier when I'm reminded you that uh, we had had you take us on the new 100th anniversary of Fenway Park, and you're a Red Sox Avenue manager, Bobby Valentine. Yeah. They've done some trading. Yeah. They're building, and so you say that's fine with I me. I think it's fantastic. Th listen, you, and also I have to say that as a Red Sox fan, and we won in 2004 and 2007. 2004 was a dream. We beat your Yankees four in a row. My Yankees. 2007 was it was gravy and a surprise. I lived my whole life. My dad came to this country in 1950 and became a Red Sox fan and lived his whole life and died without seeing the Red Sox win. 2004, well, I was done. <clears throat> like my son. My son every day is, I can't believe they're doing this and I can't believe. But I'm already thinking miles ahead because I'm, I'm an old Red Sox fan. I know, we, you know. We've got time. We should develop these young kids. I don't. If we have to sacrifice this season, it's fine with me. There's one thing about me you don't know that will make you jealous. Only one. <laughs> I got to know Ted Williams. Did I you spent really? Time with him. Had conversations <sighs> with him. God. Have look baseball at, signed by face. him. Did you really? Ted Charlie? Williams. I mean, Ted, Ted Williams. Williams. He was the, he was the, the most impressive man. The real one John of, Wayne. Yeah. He fought two John wars Wayne. as a jet fighter pilot right. and was the greatest hitter right. in the history of baseball. Right. Last last hitter to hit 400, but but such a charismatic guy. Yeah, yeah. I would I would have loved to have met him. Yeah. Every Red Sox fan I know. You know, I heard an interview with him one time on the radio with Bob Costas. This is yeah. 25 years ago. He was talking about hitting. I was driving home from a comedy gig in Boston, and it was on the radio. When I turned the radio on, I thought John Wayne was being interviewed. Mm. Yeah. I realized the the timber of the voice was exactly the same. If you closed your eyes and you were listening to Ted Williams talk, it would sound like John Wayne. Except he was the real John Wayne because he actually went to war twice and gave up, you know, like six years. And the of great his thing about Ted Williams is he had this extraordinary vision, uh, better than 2020, yeah. and, and, as it would be with a pilot. Uh, and he saw the plate once and he knew it was like a millimeter off. And the umpire said, no, it's not. So they came and measured it. Was, See, was I, right. I, think, I think it's astonishing when you, uh, we've, you guys have probably talked about this before, but there's an HBO special about. George Bush Sr. right now that's on. Oh, 41. Yeah. yeah, 41. That's actually fantastic to, to witness him or a guy like Ted Williams who said it as well. When George Bush Sr. talks about when he, and they have the footage of him being rescued when he had to crash his jet right. into the ocean, yes. yeah, right? I saw that, yeah. He talks about it like it was a double and yeah. he slid into second base. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I like, yeah, that. yeah, and then, I, and then they picked me out and, you know, whatever. Right. Like they talk, these guys were genuine heroes, heroes yes. and did things that my generation certainly never yeah. did. You yeah. know, we're worried about where the remote is and yeah. these guys, you know, these guys are real heroes. Yeah. Bush 41 says maybe I could have done more. I know. I know. Wait, but Rather than, this is extraordinary. The greatest generation. I mean, yeah. when you think about exactly. it, that's really wait, what so many people talk about when they say that. Dennis, you know, before still, you go. There, there's still a lot of those men around. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Navy SEALs, our firefighters, our, our, our cops, and military's full of them. It's just, um, 
It's ex extraordinary people, you know. I mean, we, what we For do sure. is really what we do, but what those people do is really. Have you developed a relationship with firefighters because of the series? Uh, well, it was actually before that. My cousin Jerry Lucy became a firefighter, as did a lot of the guys I went to school with. We went to the same school for 12 years uh, in my neighborhood. And, uh, you know, about 30 or 40 of those guys became firefighters. And he died in the line of duty in, in 1999, along with five other firefighters up in Worcester, Mass. And I started my foundation to help those guys. <clears throat> but one of my best friends here, Terry Quinn, became a firefighter when we were in our 20s. And that led me into the New York Department. So. Um, Again, it, my admiration is, is never ending, and I just, I look at those guys. You guys just did that piece about firefighters and terror alert. Yes. You know, yeah. they're really our first responders. On 9 yes. 11, those were our first responders. I just, I can't say enough about that. I just, what they totally do is, to, it's, it, it never ceases to astonish me. Totally you know? agree. Before you go, Charlie said something that clearly made you a little jealous. Is there something about you that would make Charlie jealous? One sentence, Dennis, that's all we need. One I can sentence. tell you one right away. What? Your family. Yeah, my family, I love my family. Yeah. I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I really am. Yeah. I was, you know, I'm a broken down hockey player that couldn't do math and science. And, you know, the nuns kept telling me, that, you know, and, and nothing good was going to happen. And <laughs> this one nun put me in a play and she <laughs> saved my life. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm I, that lucky. And then meeting my wife was the, the best idea I ever Great had. Great to have you here. Well, we thank the nun, Dr. Leary. Yeah, Sister Rosemary Sullivan. <laughs> we thank her. Yeah, she thank was, you, Dr. saved Leary. my life. Good to see you. I'm glad you called me Dr. Leary. Yeah. Good to see you.